watching this free video tutorial from mographplus.com. If you are interested in learning Arnold 5 or Cinema 40 fundamentally, please make sure to check out our ultimate introduction to Arnold 5 for Cinema 40 course, which is a massive 10 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Arnold 4 Cinema 40 thoroughly. Welcome folks, it's Khezri here from mographplus.com and in this lesson we'll learn how to create realistic fabric shaders in Arnold 4 Cinema 4D using the newly introduced sheen component in the standard surface shader. You can download the project files for this lesson down below in the description. So let's create a new Arnold standard surface shader and assign it to our fabric geometry. Metal click on the new shader to open up the network editor. To create realistic fabric shaders, we only need base and sheen components. So let's zero out the specular weight and open up sheen. If you take a look at this reference photo, you can start to see what makes fabrics look like fabrics. Look how the faces or polygons that are parallel to our viewing direction are darker and the perpendicular faces to our viewing direction become fuzzier and brighter. If you can simulate this, you can get realistic fabric shaders and this is what sheen component is supposed to do. Let's run the IPR. First, we try to create a purple velvet shader. For the base color, use this dark purple. You notice in the IPR, it doesn't look like fabric at all because we still don't have that previously described attributes of fabrics. If I increase the sheen weight to something like 0.3, We immediately get that fuzziness at glancing angles. You notice how the parallel faces to our viewing direction are showing the defined darker base color and the perpendicular faces are showing the defined white sheen color. In addition to that white color, sheen component also adds that feeling of fuzziness by simulating microfibers. Let's stop the IPR for now. We also have this sheen roughness, which modulates how much the microfibers diverge from the surface normal direction. Basically using the roughness value, you can control where that fuzziness begins. Uh, by increasing it, it begins at lower angles from the parallel faces and by decreasing it, the fuzziness starts at higher angles from the parallel faces. Let's run the IPR again. If I set the roughness to 0.1, you see how the sheen effect is limited to very extreme glancing angles. And if set to something high like 0.6, now that sheen effect is more widespread and starts early. For something like velvet, set the sheen weight to 1 and sheen roughness to 0.1. And for the sheen color, let's use a brighter, less saturated color compared to our base color. And let's see what we get. And now, as you can see, we get this nice velvet shader. If we bring up the reference picture again and zoom in a tad, you notice in this particular velvet fabric, we have this pattern throughout. So let's add this pattern as well. Uh, let's just duplicate this shader and assign the new shader to our geometry. Now load this fabric pattern image I simply control tab and type image and then load this one. And we want to use this as the bump map. So connect it to the bump map input of the bump 2D node.
and connect the bump to the node to the normal input of the standard surface shader. And set the bump height to around 0.2 centimeters or 0.3 something in that neighborhood. And now if you connect the image to the beauty port while the IPR is running, we probably need to set the scale to something like 0.2 and 0.2 to get a better distribution compared to what we have right now. Now connect the standard surface to the beauty port again and let's see what we get. And now we have this beautiful fabric pattern as well. Now let's create a crushed velvet, something like this reference photo right here. Now for this, let's duplicate the original velvet shader and open up its network editor. We basically need two base velvet shaders. One should be fairly brighter than the other one. Then we mix the two to get the final crushed velvet look. So let's duplicate the standard surface shader again in the network editor. Now let's use brighter base and sheen colors compared to our base shader. Now we're going to add an Arnold layer shader and connect it to the beauty port and make sure IPR is running. Connect the darker velvet shader to input one and connect the second one to input two. Now to mix them together, we can load this map called BW8 and use it as the mix to input. So where the map is white, basically the second input will show up and where the map is uh, darker, the first input will show up. I'm going to set the scale for this BW8 image to 0.2 and this should give us our desired look. Let's wait a bit. Now we are getting this realistic crushed velvet shader. Now let's create a simple upholstery cotton fabric shader. I'm going to create a new Arnold standard surface shader and assign it. Zero out the specular weight as always. Unload that fabric pattern image again and set its scale to 0.2 and connect it to the base color. Well, let's just draw a region to get faster feedbacks from the IPR. We want to use the same image for the sheen color as well, but obviously we want it to be brighter compared to the base color texture. So connect it to an Arnold color correct map. Now connect the color correct map to the sheen color input of the standard surface shader. Set the sheen weight to 0.6. And in the color correct node itself, increase the gamma to three. Uh, so we get a quite brighter version of our original texture. And let's set the sheen roughness to something like 0.2. Now for the bump map, connect the original fabric pattern image to the bump map input of a bump to the node. Set the bump height to 0.85 centimeters and connect the bump to the node to the normal input of the standard surface shader. Obviously, we increase the bump height quite significantly compared to our previous shaders because we want that pattern to be quite obvious throughout this shader. Let's see what we're going to get. And this is our cotton sort of shader. While we are here, let's create a colored version of this as well. Simply duplicate the whole shader and assign it. Let's open it up. 
add a layer RGBA node. I'm going to use this fabric pattern image as input one and use this light reddish brown as the second color and set the second layer operation or blending mode to negation and connect the layer RGBA to the base color input. And simply use the same layer RGBA node as the input for the color correct node that is connected to the sheen color. Now for this to look better, let's increase the sheen weight to something like 0.8. So it really depends on what you're looking for. If you want more of that fuzzy feeling, just increase the sheen weight. Let's see what we get. And there you have it. Next, let's go for a satin look. And for this one, we won't be utilizing the sheen component as for satin, if you take a look at this reference picture here you notice satin or silk is different and the highlights are kind of playing with you. There is no well-defined pattern that you can describe, but I have a pretty good formula to create highly realistic satin or silk shaders and it involves curves. So let's create a new standard surface shader and assign it. Let's zero out the specular weight as well. For silk, first we need a facing ratio node. Let's add it and connect it to our base color. A facing ratio outputs zero or black for the perpendicular faces to our viewing direction and one or white for the parallel faces to our viewing direction. But we want to be able to remap these values. For this, we can use a RAM float node. So let's connect the facing ratio node to the input port of the RAM float and connect the RAM flow to the base color input of the standard surface shader. Now using this curve, we can remap these values to whatever we want. There is a particular curve that results in a very, very close look to satin or silk. Now let's open up the curve in a separate window. We are trying to put the highest and brightest values to be a bit off of the exact parallel angles to our viewing direction and making the very frontal, frontal angles just a tad brighter. And uh, a curve like uh, this should give us a, a silk-like look. We just need a bit more work to make it better. I've actually saved out a better curve. Let me just paste it here. And this should give us a really nice satin shader, as you can see. If I just run the IPR. The next thing would be to incorporate the specific colors that we are looking for. To do that, we can use a mix RGBA shader and connect the RAM floats node to the mix input of the mix RGBA node. For the input one color, let's use a dark purple and for the input two color, use this brighter shade of the same color. and voila, you have a very realistic satin shader. To get a different satin color, you can simply change the input one and two colors. So let me just duplicate the whole satin shader and assign the new one again. Let's try this dark and bright green colors and see what we get. And here is our green satin or silk shader. And obviously you can try whatever color that you want. For now, let's stop the IPR and create a towel shader. I'm gonna create a new standard surface shader and assign it. 
zero out the specular weight as always and open up the base and the sheen components or layers. Let's use this darker shade of blue as the base color and this brighter shade of the same color as the sheen color and probably set the sheen weight to around one. And the sheen roughness can stay at 0.3. We already have this Arnold parameters tag applied to the fabric geometry. Let's go to the subdivision section and increase the iteration to about four because we do need to involve displacement mapping and we need more polygons. Now for the displacement map, let's load this towel image and set its scale to 0.6 and connect it to the displacement input of a normal displacement shader. And set the displacement scale to 0 0.012. And now we can connect this normal displacement shader or node to our displacement port. Let's also select the standard surface shader and set its base weight to 1 so we get a brighter shader. Now let's see what we get. So here is our tall shader with displacement mapping. So that's about creating realistic fabric shaders in Arnold for Cinema 4D. Make sure to subscribe and follow MoGraph Plus. See you next time. Thanks for watching this free video tutorial from MoGraphPlus.com. If you are interested in learning Arnold 5 for Cinema 4D fundamentally, please make sure to check out our ultimate introduction to Arnold 5 for Cinema 4D course, which is a massive 10 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Arnold 4 Cinema 4D thoroughly.